are now staring down a barrel of a crisis. This is the plan. I'm not turning around now. Hi, Jeff. Jared, it's such a thrill to meet you finally. I'm a big fan. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you. Foundation, what an ambitious series. I'm about three episodes in, and uh, this is like a graduate level in science fiction, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's ambitious and it's epic. It's got a you know a huge uh, cast of characters. It takes some some big swings at some big ideas. Well, your character, Dr. Selden, he can't save humanity, but he wants to preserve their knowledge for future generations. He wants to create an encyclopedic galactica, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, that part of that idea is that, um, I mean, it's actually sort of inspired by, uh, I think Asimov's inspiration for that was a, a certain sadness that the knowledge was lost by the burning of the library at Alexandria. Um, and the idea is, is that that the, the 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 successes, the failures, the trials and tribulations of the human race are contained within that but that stored body of knowledge. And if that disappears, then we have to start all over again. And the idea is to try and preserve that so that the the people who are, manage to survive the, the the coming apocalypse, if you like, are able to start. You know, they can they can start at level ten. Instead of level one, Jeff. You understand what I mean? No you're return, again, not Jeff return Ryan. to this, the Stone Age is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but he predicts the fall of the empire. It's coming. He uses psychohistory for the prediction. Can you explain that? Psychohistory, yes, is a predictive model based on um, psychology, uh, an understanding of history, and obviously mathematics, because you have to build the model. So, and from that, he is able to, with a, uh, I would say, an alarming degree of accuracy, be able to predict what, how the future is likely to unfold. And it, it uses, there, is, there is uncertainty in the model because you cannot know for sure what the action of any individual will be in any given moment. And they have the opportunity to redirect that course, in which case you'd have to realign your predictive model to that new circumstance. And he uses the prime transparent, which is like a mathematical... Prime radiant. Prime radiant. Yes. Which is like a mathematical Rubik's cube. That's how I describe it. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it's, it's essentially, I suppose, it's the, the Asimov version of a, you know, a computer, but it's sort of elegant in that it's contained within this cube. And so that it's constantly, you, you feed your data into it once you've created your algorithms, and it's constantly, you know, it's constantly reassessing that data and almost, almost like wargaming in a sense, trying to figure out what different scenarios and different outcomes will be. And how would you describe his relationship with Gale? It's almost like a, a, a father-daughter. Yeah, I mean, Gale is a, he recognizes a kindred spirit in Gale, certainly in the sense of her her intuitive ability to tackle a very, very, very complex and different, difficult subject. Because, you know, at that level, it isn't about sitting down and poring over books and trying to store all that stuff into your, your brain. You know, it's about making these intuitive leaps of understanding. And, um, and when you have you know, people who understand, who can perceive the world through those kind of mathematical models, you know, I mean, the famous story of Newton being hit on the head by the apple, and he suddenly has a flash of intuition. I mean, it wasn't because he was sitting there studying graphs and models and everything. So that he recognizes that there is this kindred spirit in her in that sense. But also very young, very naive, of someone who, who doesn't understand the way the world works. And, and to some extent, you know, he, that's useful to him. Um, and that... Uh, that he needs her to, he certainly sort of, he brings her to Trantor maybe without total full disclosure about the situation there. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jared. What an amazing series. And uh, 
please respect and enjoy the peace. <laughs> oh, you're an empire man. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. <laughs>